Most stories start somewhere significant with a great accomplishment at rock bottom or some other place that shows resilience. Mine starts around a Thanksgiving dinner table. You see, up until that point, I'd gone back and forth on what I wanted to do with my future. I wanted to be a veterinarian, but I couldn't handle death. And I wanted to be an engineer, but math was not my strong suit. So it was here, around this Thanksgiving dinner table, that I announced that I knew what I wanted to do with my life. I would become an artist. A distant family member laughed, the only sound other than forks scraping at plates. And he asked, for a girl as smart as you? This reaction isn't uncommon. Most creatives have faced some sort of backlash over their chosen career. For me, though, that sentence lit a fire in me. I'd proved him wrong. In the years that followed, I struggled my way through making a name for myself. And at the ripe age of teenagedom, I spent day and night applying for exhibitions and finishing homework, searching for what would make me happy with this future. Living in a small, rural town, none of these opportunities were close to me. I had to either drive a great distance to a near city or ship my art across the United States, never even knowing if it would return to me. After participating in so many exhibitions of this setup that I became sick of it, I realized it shouldn't have to be this way. It didn't need to be this way. I brainstormed and thought of a way I would be able to reach people in my community and to bring opportunities to an area where they're not common, where art isn't highly valued. And that's how my project, the Youth and Art Initiative, was born. My idea for the initiative was to create a local arts group in which I create exhibition opportunities for the youth in my area and others who wanted to participate but maybe couldn't find anything in their region. Starting it up was not an easy feat, that's for sure. A fully unfunded project, I had to find somebody who would volunteer a venue space, and I had to create application forms and agreements. I had to be my own social media manager, and I had to be the one to coordinate everything largely on my own. There were some days where I felt I wouldn't even be able to pull such a thing off. I wondered if it would be a letdown to everybody who'd say that they participate, who had already taken that first step and submitted the application form. I kept going, though, despite the struggle. I knew there was a reason I had started this, and there was a reason that I would finish it, too. Very soon, it was the week of the exhibition. I spent almost every day finding paintings, sticking command hooks to the wall, figuring out what I needed to do to make my exhibition a success. And then, just like that, it was November 12th, the day of the exhibition, and that is when the height of my stress came. I spent all morning hanging pieces and setting up food and the like, and it was a very stressful morning, and I wished that time wouldn't carry on. I wished I could stand in the center of the room and everything would just freeze and I wouldn't have to deal with it all. I began to feel as if everything I had done had failed. Because at 12, when the doors opened, the only person who stood outside was one of my high school friends. I hope that you're starting to notice a theme here because the only thing that I needed was time. Within 30 minutes, the venue is packed. People I didn't know and people I did flooded in. I helped young artists make connections from Raleigh to rural Selma all the way to Washington State. It was a surreal experience. Everyone seemed ecstatic. There were guests talking to the youth. All proceeds went to the artists from the three pieces that sold that day. Even more items sold from our artist table filled with prints and small trinkets. I began to see the impact that this event had on the community. I'd known I was doing something, but didn't know what exactly. Seeing it unfold in front of me was like a dream. 
This all really culminated when I met a man who went to an alternative high school in my community. He said that he'd never had a place to express his love for art, let alone have it exhibited. The impact made me truly realize what we had done here in the community. It was something that brought people together, the young, the old. It was art. This event allowed so many to realize the importance of creativity in our community. Many people are quick to jump and say that going into an art career is a bad idea and that it's a waste of time. I want my story, creating the Youth in Art Initiative, to encourage the youth to see art as a worthy career and a rather sustainable one at that. In fact, the art market in the United States alone is projected to grow to $795 billion by 2026. That's not even including the inspiration and joy that we get from pursuing a creative career. If art is simply a creative expression of emotions, we all have the power to create it. Despite all this, there are still many who say that art isn't worthy of our time, that you shouldn't pursue this type of future. And to those individuals, I ask, who makes the music that you listen to in your car ride to work? Who wrote that book that you finished last, last week? And who wrote, directed, and filmed the movies that you watch in your spare time? Don't be afraid to pursue creativity in your life. Young creatives are the future. Thank you.